And of course, sorry for me right for not even having the audio on. Welcome to the afternoon edition of From Day One. Due to my coronavirus situation I'm currently in, speaking to you under the mask, and Mikey and Judge Run Hill are along with us to help us out for this afternoon due to the situation. So Mikey and Miss Run Hill, if you'd be so kind. Call the case, Ms. Parker, please. The case is, Your Honor, 2018 DCV0585. Nuvasiv versus East. Yes, it's Nuvasiv Inc. versus East El Paso Physicians Medical Center, LLC, doing business as Foundation Surgical Hospital of El Paso. Announcement of counsel, please. It's Skylar Parker on behalf of Nuvasiv Inc. with the law firm Wick Phillips, Gould and Martin. Mark White for the defendant, Your Honor. Anybody else here on this case? I don't believe so, Your Honor. It is incredulous to me how disrespectful you all are. How disrespectful. 20 minutes before a scheduled hearing, you say we don't need it anymore. Nobody has the respect, the professional courtesy to show up and say, Judge, we don't need this anymore. Okay, so here's where I find this hard to take. I've been doing this for over 25 years now. When I when I come rolling into court and say, Judge, we settled it, I, I mean, universally, for 25 years, through hundreds of judges, I've had, oh, that is fantastic, counsel. That, that's great news. Uh, let's, let's enter that dismissal order. That's what I hear. I don't hear any crying like, oh, I really wanted to hold a hearing and make a decision where I'm going to get somebody mad at me. Judges love it when you, when you resolve something. They love it. Then they don't have to make a decision. And it's not because they're lazy, but it, it's it's better. And it, if the parties agree, you, you have an agreed settlement is always preferable. That means everybody said, OK, there's less chance of problems going forward. They don't have to irritate anybody. They don't have to sit there and listen to a bunch of boring testimony for an hour and a half. I, I, I literally don't understand why she's upset that they resolve something. Uh, apparently, she thinks they should have told her sooner. I mean, things resolve. Like, as you're approaching hearing or trial all the time, that's when they resolve. I'm, I've picked a jury, had them sit in the box, gone back in chambers and settled the case more than once. That's that's when the pressure's on. That's when things resolve. I, I don't know where she's coming from. And I, I am fond of Judge Ren Hell. I just think I just think she's out of her mind in this case. You guys tell me. I know I've got a lot of attorneys in there. Also, I could be missing something. They may have done a bunch of stuff where they were blowing her off in the past, but but that doesn't appear in the video. And these attorneys are super nice. I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. Uh, let, let's let's do a number one if she's out of line. Number two, if you think these attorneys are out of line in the chat, I I, I, want, I want to get a, a gauge of this. Yes, Your Honor, this is completely my fault. Um, Mr. White, I had told him the hearing was canceled, so it's not on him. It is on me. We had settled the matter and also settled a new matter. And it, it was my fault. I take complete blame on this. I should have showed up and let you know about the settlement. Um, if I'm, yeah. So I, I apologize. I, so, I, well, I agree it was disrespectful and it will not happen again. And your honor, that's, I mean, that's, that's not entirely true. We, we take responsibility as well, judge. There was some delay in responding uh, with some emails to, with counsel to, to sort of finalize our agreement. And so some Oh man, this this uh, female attorney just throws herself on her sword like a champ and just wants to take the hit for everybody. There. Not be more professional about it. Her, her opposing counsel then then decides he's going to take some of this himself, uh, I, and they're both apologetic. I I don't I don't know how you can be mad at him. Some of that was on was on my part, Your Honor, and so um, we we apologize uh, for any inconvenience that it caused the court. It's not an inconvenience, sir. It's a disrespect. I'm here. I have a docket. It's not inconvenience, sir. It's total, blatant disrespect, sir. And there seems to be a systematic disrespect with out-of-town lawyers consistently in my court. You feel you don't have to show up in El Paso County for any cases that are hearings or trials, whatever. 
So don't take cases in El Paso County if you continue with this disrespect. Stay in the counties you're at. Uh, this is just undeniably out of, out of hand. I, I don't care what the context is. Uh, they can take cases wherever they like. They're, if they're officers of the court and members of the bar and someone hires them and it's before you, they can take that case whether you like it or not, Judge. Are, are you suggesting that you're going to preclude licensed attorneys in the state of Texas from, from uh, practicing law before you? I mean, that, that's a crazy statement to make. It really is. I know she doesn't mean it and she's, she, she's on a rant, but uh, that's not something you, you, you let out you know, verbally, certainly not while you're being recorded. We've got some great, capable, awesome El Paso attorneys. Let them handle the cases here. If you continue with this disrespect and somehow, some way, because of the systematic disrespect that I get every single time from out of town lawyers, apologies do not cut it, Miss Parker. This is never going to happen again. Yes, Your Honor, I completely understand. Yes, Your Goodbye. Honor. Goodbye. Goodbye. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Don't make Oscar beg. It's rude. Okay, I'm pretty excited. I might see I might see Oscar this evening. I might get Oscar squeezes. Yeah, you all know how much that means to me. But uh, again, I I I'm very fond of Judge Ron Hell, but I, for for whatever reason, I've seen that a couple other times. I held off on it because I don't think it makes her look good. But then I thought, you know what? I I'll just say it in context. You, you don't always agree with everybody about everything. That's okay. And I don't know the whole story. Maybe she's right. Maybe they did a bunch of nasty stuff behind the scenes. <clears throat> But what, from what I can gather, it's two attorneys who resolved a matter, and 99 out of 100 judges would be would be very grateful and grateful that they, A, don't have to sit through that hearing, and B, don't have to make a ruling, and the parties have come to a resolution. That That is considered a win-win in 99% of the courts in the country. Um, two weeks ago, when that guy was insisting that Deputy Richardson was a woman? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, that was a fun one. At one point, he said, I know it was a woman that gave me my ticket. So, unless this deputy was wearing women's clothes on that day, and I said, Oh, he was wearing women's clothes. And the guy said, What? I said, Well, the uniform for a male deputy and the male deputy are the same. The same. Right. So, on that day, he definitely was wearing a of a female Washington County Sheriff's deputy. That guy filed an appeal. Well, of course he did. <laughs> yeah. Because well, he always all. stops at the stop sign. Oh, always. The, the video. The video. Yeah. yeah, the video. He like barely even slows down, but he said that that, that wasn't true. <laughs> all right. Well, that was, yeah, there we go. Buddy. He was dressed like a woman. This was a woman. Well, all of the sheriff's department deputies wear the same uniform. So you're right. Deputy Richardson was dressed like a, a female sheriff's deputy on that day. That's true. He was? Sure. All right. For those of you who haven't seen this in the prior video, also, you, I, mean, I, can't, I don't know. I did a prior video on this uh, on this case. I did it when, the, when they had the trial that, that we're looking at right now. And, uh, and I, I can't remember what where it is but this is the follow-up to that he appeals the decision of uh i think it's magistrate fink and we end up in, in, in front of fresh hour but <laughs> uh th this is impressive too for old squishy gardener by the way if you haven't go over there you know like and subscribe he put all this stuff together this isn't all one hearing i don't know how he even get found all this but it had to be hours of like combing through stuff to put all this together in one package they all wear the same uniform I see a okay. stop sign. Now watch the stop okay. sign. This is your vehicle approaching. Water nicely. And, and driving right through. That doesn't show me stopping. Okay. Right. It doesn't show me. Yeah, it doesn't show you stopping. And that's the problem. That's what you got written a ticket for. Stop. <laughs> I stopped. Richardson <laughs> is the male. This woman yes. was a female. So there's some kind of question about that. So. Okay, I'll I'll appeal it. Thank you. Oh, shame, shame on you for wearing a woman's uniform. I've been told my voice is sometimes feminine. It's okay. 
how does he not how did he not see your mustache it was dark i don't know Case number 22W001290, York Township versus Brian Talaski. Victor Lillick for York Township, Your Honor. It looks like he's having some audio issues. He's been trying to connect for a little while, so I will pass this. Maybe he'll figure that out. Is Talaski a hearing? <laughs> No, Your Honor. Uh, well, I, I don't know, Your Honor. Uh, he's, if he's present, my officer's present. Uh, oh, thank you, Lee. I, I'd like to talk to the guy if okay, I could. We can put Mr. Lillich, Ms., uh, Deputy Richardson, and Mr. Tulaski into a breakout room together. Mr. Tulaski, we're putting you in a breakout room with the prosecutor and the officer. Oh, there he goes. So it looks like we're just waiting for Mr. Tulaski to come back in. And let, let me let me explain, Your Honor. Thank you for the breakout room with Mr. Tulaski. He was non-responsive in the breakout room. Um, he was muted the entire time. I tried to talk to him, didn't get any responses back. Mr. Uh, Tulaski, can you unmute your phone, please? You press star six. Mr. Uh, Tulaski, can you hear us? Is is he back out of the? Uh... His numbers ends in. Th Mr. Talaski, can you hear us? Mr. Talaski, can you hear us? He's unmuted, so I'm not really sure what the issue is. I I I, I don't know either, Your Honor. Uh, I did uh, try to talk to him while we were in the breakout room. I made an offer. Uh, and explain to him that if we can't get it resolved today, uh, if we have to have an in-person hearing, that offer would not be on the table. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what else so to do, Your Honor. You, perhaps you can try calling him from to that number. Well, I suppose I could. So I'm going to have to adjourn this. I don't know what's going on with this. Is that audio. is that is that his number right there? It is his number. To your honor, I have uh, hearings at one o'clock oh, also. He's done. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to try to call him. Okay, so I'm um, going to adjourn his case to August 2nd, 2022 at 11 a.m., and we will send him notice. Well, your honor, I mean, the, again, the, the officer's here. He has to be back here for a, a one o'clock hearing. Uh, he's scheduled for one. Actually, I have those cases resolved, but if I can get him to come back at one o'clock, we can take If he can get his audio to work, sure, I'm happy to call it. All right, all right. We're gonna be in recess until one o'clock. Thank you. I don't remember what day. we sent it for the 27th. Jim. Mr. Tulaski, can you press star six? Hello. You, Mr. Tulaski, we adjourned your case to July 27th at 9 a.m. and that's gonna be in person at the 14A4 District Court. Okay, uh, 27 July. And, at 9 a.m. Uh, okay, July. And um, that's in Celine. Go ahead. Hello. In Celine at 9 a.m. Is that in Celine? Go ahead. Yes. Okay, real fine. I'll be there. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. I don't know. Stop it. Case number 22W001290. This is York Township versus Brian Tulaski. Good morning, Your Honor. Victor Bullock on behalf of York Township. We're here for a formal hearing. Mr. Tulaski is present. Uh, I will Sir, can you step forward and say your name? Scott. Brian Tulaski, ma'am. And who are you, sir? Yeah, you're right. Okay, thank you. I'm hard on hearing, too. I can't. I don't have a hearing aid, so. Okay. Go ahead. And what are we doing today? No, unfortunately, we have not been able to resolve this case, Your Honor. How did that happen? Okay. We could do that right now. Sure. Yeah. Okay, let's 
standing. But you can have a seat at the table, sir. This is a stop sign violation. Could you speak in the microphone so that way we can make sure that he can hear you a little better? All right. Uh, this is a stop sign violation that occurred on 315 of this year, um, about 9 o'clock, 9 12 in the evening. The officer was there. Uh, his video was running. We have video of the incident. We're ready to proceed at this time, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Tulaski, would you like to make an opening statement? Uh, on that day coming through, I had just changed my direction where uh, I was going to go back to Monroe. I was going down, going down to Carpenter through this interchange, down to Willow, and then go east. I had been going down Willis to Whitaker, and then going east. So, so I was, you know, I had to watch, make sure. I had been through there for several weeks. So I had to be very careful. There were no traffic, what was going on, anything new in there. What I noted in this, uh, this uh, photo that the uh, officer presented, um, there's a, a store there, or not a store, a garage. Somebody was would do repairs. And when, when I came through there, there was a big pickup truck. And there was a foreign car parked next to that island. And that yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but you didn't stop at the stop sign. That would be, you couldn't see the, uh, you couldn't see the stop sign. So, and for weeks that sat there. And when I finally, um, when I finally saw people there, I stopped and told them about the incident and asked them to put a no trespassing sign. But then they cleared it all out. So it's all clear. This is the picture they have. They started to repair vehicles. And uh, so when when the officer stopped me, and it was a woman, woman stopped me, I told her I believed I stopped. Because there was no traffic, 9 o'clock at night, out in the boondocks. So. And so I stopped. As far as I'm concerned, I stopped. I went through the intersection. As far as I'm concerned, I stopped. <laughs> also, you saw the officer that arrested him with the full beard. He doesn't look like a woman at all, not remotely. And they were sitting there way out of nowhere. So, okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lillich, do you have any witnesses for the people? I think your honor called uh, Officer Jeremiah Richardson of Washington last year. Jeremiah Richardson, J-E-R-E-M-I-A-H-R-I-C-H-A-R-E-S-O-N. Officer Richard, Richardson, where, where are you employed? Washington County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been with the department? Uh, over 10 years. All right. And what are your normal duties with the department? I'm assigned to road patrol. Uh, on this date, I was assigned to York Township in Washington County, Michigan. All right. And were you working on uh, March 15, 2022? Yes. You were doing your normal duties. Road Patrol? Yes. And uh, do you recall uh, at some time around 9 o'clock uh, coming into a contact with Ryan Tulaski? Yes. And is he in the courtroom here today? Yes. Can you point to him and describe him a little bit of what he's wearing? Uh, yes, he's sitting at the table right there, uh, a blue or grayish shirt with a flag on it. All right. The record should reflect that he's, he's identified the respondent. So noted. And... Uh, can you, uh, um, let me just, uh, can I approach the witness? All right, I've, I've handed you what we're going to call the uh, plaintiff's exhibit one, all right? Can you identify what that is? Uh, yes, it's a Google map image that I printed out this morning to provide to Mr. Tulaski. It shows the intersection of uh, Carpenter Road and Stony Creek, which uh, where I was sitting on March 15th. All right, I request for sufficient sign on any objection or voir dire or any questions for him regarding this picture? Mr. Tulaski? Any questions for him? Regarding this photo and its admission. 
So no objection to that being admitted into evidence, sir, is that correct? Say what? Do you have any objection to it being added into evidence? No. Okay. People's proposed exhibit one is admitted. All right. Uh, so, Mr. or Officer Richardson, uh, where were you located when you first saw Mr. Tulaski? I was parked stationary in a northwest corner on Carpenter and Stony Creek. Uh, in this Google image, it depicts a uh, garage with Mr. Tulaski also referred to uh, that parking lot. I was parked there and I was facing southbound. All right. And is there a driveway at that garage location where you were parked? Yes, that is uh, north of the uh, stop sign. Is there a copy for the court to review? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Officer, you indicated you were on Stony Creek or Carpenter? On Carpenter Road. Okay, thank you. You were on Carpenter Road. And where were you? We were parked in that parking lot that was next to the garage there? Correct. Which direction was your vehicle pointing? Southbound. All right. And when you first observed Mr. Zelaski, which direction was he driving in? Southbound. All right. So he was southbound on Carpenter Road there? Correct. For All right. And, it, uh, and then what did you observe? Uh, I had a clear view of the intersection. Uh, I've said that at that intersection before for uh, people disobeying the stop sign. I also uh, sit at four-way intersections to look for their drivers. Uh, as he approached southbound, I observed him fail to stop at the stop sign as he continued southbound past Stony Creek. Okay, so did you stop at the stop sign? What did you do? Uh, I then uh, traveled uh, southbound after his vehicle activated the patrol vehicle emergency lights and then initiated a traffic stop. All right, and uh, did you uh, have a conversation with Mr. Slavsky? Yes, I. Uh, I worked by myself down in York Township. I was the lone deputy that night. I approached his uh, driver door, and I had asked him uh, any reason why he didn't stop for the stop time. He stated that he did, and I uh, subsequently issued him a citation for disobeying the stop time. Um, and uh, I guess I don't have anything more except for your honor. I do have video of the incident. Uh, it's on my computer. I'm not certain if I could put it up on the screen there or how you want to get it. If we're able to just play, play it on the screen, right. it might be easier. Whatever, whatever works, Charlie. We just need the cords that connect it. And this is a video that, sir, you've seen? Mr. T Tulaski, have you seen this video? Excuse me? Have you seen this video? Yes. Okay. Do you have any objection with the prosecutor showing me this video? No. Right. I never saw it before. Okay. Wait, have you had an opportunity to review this video? Yes. Today. Okay. Okay, you are by the approach or well, can we lay some foundation before it's admitted? I'm sorry. Can we lay some foundation for its admission? All right. Okay, that, that's kind of interesting because she goes out of her way to make sure that, that he says he doesn't object to it and he's seen it before, but then she wants to lay she so sponte objects. Which she, which she can do, that's fine, but she can also just let it in at this point. Uh, the, the, you know, there's been no objection to it, and he's just offering it into evidence. Without objection, it sort of goes in, but she wants the record to be clear um, on this. She's confident he can lay a foundation, but she actually makes him do it. Uh, Officer Richardson, is your uh, patrol car and uh, equipped with, uh, with the video? Yes. All right. Was it equipped with video that evening? Yes. And was that video system operating correctly? Yes. And did you record the incident? Yes. And uh, do you also have body cam? We don't need the body cam. We just have the video. Could you show him so he could verify that this is the video he submitted from his police car? I can do that. Like a chart. Yes. Yes, that's the video for my uh, patrol vehicle. Vehicle uh, 57. Thank you. Any objection to admission of this video? People's proposed exhibit number two is admitted. Would you like me to review it right now? Council, I don't know how much of this video you, you would like me to watch. More of it than just the, the, the vehicle going through the stop sign, Your Honor, I think. This is the point where the vehicle is pulled over now. Okay. I, I did I did review it. Thank you. 
No, I guess I don't have it. I'll have to check it out. Okay. Mr. Cholesky, it's your opportunity to cross-examine the witness. Do you have any questions? Yes. Oh, uh, here we go. Uh, were you in uniform? Yes. Were you with anybody else? No. All right. Okay. Um, you, you, <clears throat> the picture that you showed shows no vehicle, no no obstruction. At the time when I went through, and I, that was the first time I'd gone through there in weeks, there was a big pickup truck, Julie, and a small foreign car parked uh, uh, parallel to the road adjacent to that small island. So you could not see, you could not see what I had been doing. Okay, so now he's testifying. He's not asking a question. He's offering a defense that the, the, the sign was obstructed. That, that defense is uh, in conflict with his defense that he did, in fact, stop. He also has another defense where I guess it's a reasonable doubt sort of defense where he says that, that he was ticketed by a woman. None of these three go together, but, but uh, he, he's carrying on like this. The, the judge cuts him off appropriately here in just a second. From 100 feet, 20, 50 feet, 20 feet, 10 feet. And I was coming through the first time. I had to be very careful. And so um, uh, I stopped. When the light went blink, it was blink, it goes stop, go, stop, go. I stopped and I went through at probably 10 miles per hour. And then the, some officer pulled me. So, Mr. Concerned. Talaski, this is your opportunity to ask him questions. You will have an opportunity to tell your version of the story, but if you have questions for the officer, now so you can you ask him. Did you notice any vehicles? Did you see me beyond, you know, going south, any any activity that I had? Is your question, was, is your question, was there a clear, did I have a clear view of the intersection yeah. of the stop sign? Yeah. Yes, I did have a clear view, and I would also say that the video, as you're approaching southbound, it shows your headlights also reflecting upon uh, that building, but I also have a clear view, which just uh, so you, the, the Google Maps. You map didn't see anything you. prior up to that stop sign, because there was obstructions there. So. I, I had no obstructions, sir. Yes, there was. And for weeks, they sat there <clears throat> until I stopped. Is there a question? Say what? Is there a question for the officer? No. Thank you. Any further redirect? So he's making reference to some vehicles that are hard parallels to the road. Did you see anything like that out there? I had a clear view. Uh, I don't, at this point in time, I don't recall having any uh, vehicles in my, uh, in my uh, sitting there with me. Uh, that uh, garage is generally probably occupied. Uh, during the day, maybe a couple times during the week. Uh, what I recall was a small little passenger car parked in the parking lot, but regardless, I have a clear view of the intersection. There was nothing that was obstructing your vehicle's view from that intersection. Correct. And in fact, your, the video actually demonstrates that. What, what are you talking about, Beverly? <laughs> Thank you. Can I have a question, please? If, yes. It has to be regarding what he just testified to. Did, uh, did I say anything to you, Toya, at the time you stopped, <clears throat> if you were there? I, I believe you said that you, you thought she did stop or something. Like that. I believe you said that you thought she did stop, but I don't recall your exact statement. Right. Okay. Thank you. May this witness be excused. Thank you. Any further witnesses from the people? Mr. Tulaski, do you have any witnesses or would you like to testify? Thank you. Do, do, you, do I want to testify anything? Correct. It's your opportunity to either testify or call witnesses on your behalf. Sure. Okay. If you sure. could come up and be sworn by the officer. <laughs> Brian Tulaski, go ahead. If you could spell your name for the record, please. Ma'am. Can you spell your name for the record, please? P-R-I-A-N, Talaski, T-A-L-A-S-K-E. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. You can Am testify. Mm -hmm. You can Why? tell us what happened. Okay. Um, I traveled between Whitmore Lake and Monroe because I moved to Monroe, and I was doing that every day 
um, because I was moving some furniture. And I have horses still in, in Whitmore Lake, and I had to go every day 50 miles one way to, uh, to feed them, make sure the water's there. So, um, so I, so I had different routes that I was trying, and at that evening, um, I decided to deviate from Carpenter. To oh my God! We're we're starting with the Big Bang Theory here. D did you stop at the sign? Did you stop at the sign? If it if if, if it doesn't go to that, it's not interesting. Willis Road to Whitaker, and to go. Carpenter Road, all the way through Stony Creek to Willow Road. Mm -hmm. um, and this photograph here shows Stony Creek. Okay. And uh, I hadn't been there in weeks, so I was, I had to make sure that I was cautious, make sure that there was no traffic. And so I approached the uh, Approached the uh, intersection at um, um, about 100 feet, 50 feet, 20 feet, and then I 20 feet, maybe 10 feet, and I stopped. There was no traffic. Not five feet? At all between those times. And so I proceeded through through the intersection about 10 miles per hour. Takes me a Okay, so you're going 10 miles an hour, and you went through the interception, intersection. You were probably going faster than that, but you were you're going 10 miles an hour by your own admission through the intersection. That justifies the ticket. About 100 feet to go, 40 miles per hour. Not to mention the videotape that also shows that. At this this photograph that they have is a picture of a uh, a garage. And I hadn't seen anybody use the garage for for months when I was going through there. And they had parked uh, uh, probably in line with that stop sign uh, with a big dually truck and a uh, foreign car. So they're in that tape, and I had never seen that tape before. Um, so to me, I, I stopped before the stop sign and there was no traffic and I went through and this officer pulled me over. And to me, it looked like a woman. She was dressed in a uniform. She had a woman haircut. Um, she had a full beard. She looks like a man. I just, I just cannot <laughs> believe the tape that they showed me, and I have never seen it before. So, as far as I'm concerned, and I told whoever was there, the woman, I believed I had stopped because that's what I do. I've been doing it for almost almost uh, eight, nine months. This is the big question. I don't know why he's sticking with the he looked. The, the officer was a woman, other than. Here's my theory. Tell me, tell me what you guys think in the chat. My theory was initially he was just mad he got pulled over, so he thought it was his method of being insulting. And I'll leave that. <clears throat> I'll leave that to y'all. Like but he thought he was insulting. Oh, sorry, one man. Uh, after the fact, he thought, ah, I'll use it to create reasonable doubt. He doesn't think that clearly, but in, in his muddled pro se sort of way, what he means is, I'll say, well, I, it couldn't have been right. I mean, I, you know, I was given a ticket by a woman. And, and what, what that would do is create reasonable doubt here. It, it doesn't. But I think, I think it was initially uh, him attempting to be insulting, and then he translates it into a defense later thinking he's clever. That's just my guess. And uh, I stop and I go. And uh, I think my stop was efficient, but it doesn't show on here. It doesn't show on his tape because these vehicles would block it. And uh, so, and uh, so we had a hearing and I insisted that it was a woman. I, I, I cannot believe it's somebody else. And sure so, uh, 
point statement. Thank you. Mr. Lilich, do you have any cross-examination? So, by your own testimony, you went through that intersection. Of Can you speak roughly, up? I'm Can sorry. speak up a little? Yeah, I'm sorry. By your own testimony, you actually said that you went through that intersection at 10 miles an hour. Is that right? Is that what you said? I stopped, and then I started out at 10 miles an hour. Stop. <clears throat> And, and, and you still believe that this officer isn't the officer that stopped you. You believe it was a woman. Is that correct? That's, I, I can't believe that, that somebody else. Yes, sir. A little short woman. Had Fresh Hour struggles the entire way through this, keeping her facial expression neutral. Uh, and, and, and at times she fails. <laughs> woman haircut. It's delicious. And, and you saw the video, right? You saw the video, correct? The video, you saw the video. We showed you the video, right? Today you showed me a video. All I saw was a little bit of my vehicle going through the intersection. Yeah, all right. But that was your vehicle, correct? Yeah, there you go. Affirming that it was your vehicle. I mean, we already know it. You're convicted. But uh, again, that, that's enough right there. That was my vehicle. All right. And there were no obstructions between your vehicle and that video, were there? Do I? There were no obstructions between the video and your vehicle. Isn't that right? Well, once you're going through the intersection, no. Before that, there was there had to be an obstruction because those vehicles sat for weeks. And then when I stopped to talk to them, they moved and cleared it out because the people were standing, you know, maybe the police were using it as a point to issue tickets. Go ahead. So... You, you saw the video. You saw your vehicle didn't stop at the stop sign, correct? You did not stop at the stop sign. You cannot, there does not show me stopping at that intersection, okay? It does All not it show. Yes, yes, the video does not show you stopping. Once again, the whole, the whole reason why we're here. You know, if you want to, if you want to parse yardage or feet, then uh, I think we agree. I, I, think we, I think we agree, Mr. Talaski. The video does not show you stopping at that intersection, correct? It doesn't show me when I stop, okay? And that road is on an angle, so I'm closer. I mean, he had stopped the vehicle at some point during that day. N not necessarily at that intersection. <laughs> so I'm closer to that stop sign than, than, uh, than when be Normal, you know, para, you know, cross a normal cross section. So. Right, but again, the video shows you rolling through that stop sign. No, no, yeah. shows me. Okay. It yeah. doesn't yeah. show me stopping because yeah. there's there was no no video of that. And then and then it shows me going through through the stop sign right. again. Okay, the first time I've been through there. And I had to be real cautious. And there was no traffic, absolutely no traffic for 100 feet. So but, go ahead. Okay, so you, you, you have to acknowledge today, though, that this was the officer that stopped you, correct? You were just mistaken about the fact that it was a woman. Isn't that right? <laughs> I, I cannot you. believe that that person was standing there before me. Okay, you're mistaken about that, though, right? Say so what? You, you you are mistaken about that because he's here today, and he's. And I, you see the video. You I saw, saw him in the nobody video. else. I saw nobody else. Thank you. You may step down, sir. Mr. Chalaski, do you have any further witnesses? No. Okay. Anything further from the people? Well, Your Honor, I think the evidence is not clear uh, that uh, uh, the video shows him rolling through the stop sign, as he says, 10 miles an hour. Um, he's obviously made some mistakes uh, in his thinking about what's happened out there. Uh, again, uh, even today, he still doesn't quite, isn't quite certain about you know, this officer stopped, and the video clearly shows, and, and this officer clearly justified that it was him out there on the road. It wasn't the woman. And uh, I just think he's got a little bit of a distorted view of what happened out there. And irrespective of 
what he thinks about where he might have stopped. Okay. The law. Both of them, you'll see when she gives the ruling and this prosecutor, nobody really cares. But we've got to blow the stop sign. Um, but but they, they they're they're both so kind to him, and assume everything in his favor as he loses. Requires that you stop at the intersection before a complete stop before proceeding through, and the video and the testimony clearly demonstrate that he didn't do that. Sure. Do you have a closing statement you'd like to make, Mr. Tulaski? Um, the video shows me going through and being stopped. It doesn't show me stopping before that stop sign because there, a, there were obstructions. Vehicles were sitting there, now, and they sat there for weeks. But I told the officer, I told the officer, I believed I stopped because that's what I do. I I come to a stop sign, I go through, and then I start thinking that I have to proceed. So, you know. <laughs> I believe I stopped because that's what I do. <laughs> oh, it's it, it really is. It really is amusing. So I, I believed I stopped, and I think I did stop, and you cannot see that. On that video, uh, Judge, I have a tendency not to violate the law, so I, I'd like that to just, <laughs> to just to be, you know, I'd like you to take judicial notice of that <laughs> and just immunize me from from any accusations. How's that? Yeah, where I stopped, oh. and I then to me there was a woman there, and uh, I don't know how somebody else appeared. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further from the people? Okay. After listening to the testimony of Officer Richardson and Mr. Tulaski, I think um, everyone who testified tried to testify to the best of their ability and what they remember. Um, I don't, and I don't think she thinks it either, but it's a very nice thing for her to say. Um, I think it's... <laughs> clear not only from Officer Richardson's testimony, but his appearance in the video, as well as he is the officer who is listed as the officer who signed the ticket in this, that he was, in fact, the officer who had pulled over Mr. Tulaski. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure um, why there's some confusion about that, but nonetheless, the, issue, the most important issue here today is whether or not Mr. Tulaski stopped at the stop sign. Um, I understand that Mr. Tulaski um, indicates that he may have stopped at some point um, where there were cars that might have obstructed the officer's view of him stopping, as well as the camera's view. Um, the law doesn't permit you to stop at any point in a road where there's a stop sign. You are to stop at the stop sign, not 500 feet before the stop sign and 1,000 feet. Stopping somewhere further. That's just downright charming. I mean, you know, we all, we all understand it, but she's going she's gonna to say this explicitly and pretend like he might have might been confused about it. Nobody thinks he really was. But it's it's just very, very uh, sweet, the approach. Northbound on that road didn't mean that you didn't have to stop at the stop sign at the intersection. Um, in the video, I did not see an obstruction from, and I did, and I was able to witness Mr. Tulaski's vehicle approaching the stop sign and then driving straight through without stopping. So on that video, there is no indication that he stopped anywhere even near the stop sign. So if he had stopped at some point, I don't think that was for the stop sign or, or it was too earlier to count as stopping at the intersection. Therefore, I am going to find that um, the people have met their burden and find Mr. Tulaski responsible. It's my understanding that 
Um, Mr. Slavsky, you had posted uh, a bond of $130, which is what this ticket was issued for. So I will apply the bond to this ticket and close the case. Thank you. Well, there you have it. There you have it. Uh, Judge Freshour uh, does what we all knew she was going to do. I, I mean, we have a videotape of a guy rolling a stop sign. And then he admits it. And But she is as nice as she can be about it. I'm sure she could have tacked something on or added some costs or something, but she wasn't out to, to get him or whatever. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. He may, he may, he may appeal this one. You may appeal this one. This this should definitely go up to the Michigan Appellate Court. <laughs> I mean, he's got three great defenses. He was he was arrested by a woman. <laughs> At least that's his recollection. Uh, there was there was something obstructing the stop sign. Of course, he knew about the stop sign, and it's relevant to the fact that they have a videotape of him rolling through the stop sign. <laughs> Oh, oh, also that he had stopped his car at some point that day, maybe even on that road, not at the stop sign where it needed to, but, <laughs> but he, that car had not been in continuous motion prior to that. I'm, I'm actually confident that that's true. I, I don't know if it stopped in the zone. Actually, I know it didn't because I saw the video. <laughs> I'm confident that that car rolled right through the stop sign, and he he got what he was supposed to. So we we've got a big, hundred and thirty dollar ticket. Uh, great job by Squ old Squishy Gardener. I don't know how he got the stuff from Magistrate Fink to set uh, to set that up though. I did a prior video on this. If someone can tell me, put it in the comments or something. I can't tell you where the prior video was. It was probably on a happy hour. This is why it's probably why I can't tell you. <laughs> Oh, thank y'all for rolling with me too with my uh, two minute uh, silent opening. I appreciate Thank you, Mikey, for your help during my unfortunate pandemic situation. With that, we're going to leave this episode to a close. Please help us get to the goal of 50,000 views, 1,000 subscribers. The boxy helps send those nice red packages we can send to you all, and of course we'll go put them on the algorithm. So until next time, like, share, and subscribe, be kind to one another, and release the curtains as we march this afternoon, and hopefully still every afternoon, here from day one. We'll be back tonight, I don't know what with God or whoever you believe in, willing until then, have a great afternoon.